Hey, so I'm back with a video about the MPC Live again. This time I wanted to show you how to set up an aggregate device on your Mac in Ableton and how to use Ableton Link with the MPC Live. For a while Ableton Link was sort of this mystery to me and maybe it is to you as well so hopefully this clears it up and how we can use it. An aggregate device is the collection of some devices that are class compliant and we can select multiple class compliant devices over USB to interface with Ableton Live. For this particular session I'm going to use the Digitone and the Model 12 and show you a quick way to create that aggregate device and get it talking to Ableton so we can record into the session view easily. So let's go and have a look at how we do that. So to create an aggregate device on our Mac we need to go to our launch pad, find the little search symbol and get audio MIDI set up. You go down here to this plus symbol and it says create aggregate device. All of the devices that have class compliance will show up here automatically when they're connected by USB. In order for this to work you need to make sure that you have your drivers set up properly if you're using a different interface to me. For the Electron devices you need to use Overbridge and you need to have the Overbridge engine enabled and running. So we come down here and we can select our devices. I'm going to select the Digitone and the Model 12. So what this will do is this will allow me to select all of these individual inputs and outputs in Ableton Live which is really cool if I want to isolate one track or I want to use the main ins or I want an effects input from the Digitone if I want to run separate outputs through my channels on the Model 12 it's really handy using this so yeah I like using this. So now we go to our Ableton session, we hit command comma and we go to our audio section in our settings and in our audio input device and output device we can see here that we've got our aggregate device selected. You might have to cycle Ableton and open it again if you did this while it was already open. So yeah, pretty simple, just select your aggregate device that you created as the input and the output and you can change around your input configurations here and your output configurations here. So we want to make sure that our sounds that are coming into the external input channels on all of these are exactly where our audio is coming in from. For me the MPC Live is coming in from channel 5-6 on the Model 12, the Digitone is coming in from channel 7-8 on the Model 12 and the Minotaur is coming in from channel 4 all on the Model 12. Okay, and then I want to monitor everything on a stereo out channel on the main, so I'm sending every output to the main. So let's have a little bit of a look at what's coming in audio wise. I've got some drums coming from the MPC Live, they're coming through on channel 56. There's my melodies on the Digitone keys and my bass is being handled by the mini tour. For the MPC side of things we're using the direct outputs at the back here and they go straight to the Model 12. The Digitone is also using the direct main out and that goes straight to the Model 12 as well and then there's also the output coming from the mini tour which goes to the Model 12 as well. I've got a MIDI track set up with a couple of different patterns here on my Digitone for some variation and it's going straight to MIDI channel 1 which our Minotaur is on and I can play different notes on the keyboard on the Digitone which then translate into the Minotaur which is really cool I can record that then with the sequencer and then it just plays back automatically when I change patterns etc. The setup for that is just our MIDI config and we go to sync and we can see we're sending clock, receiving clock, transport receive and transport send as well. That's because we have a MIDI out cable coming from the MPC Live into the back of the Digitone 
and then from the MIDI out of the diggy tone, we've got that into the Minotaur. So yeah, pretty cool. Now th that's all really well and good, but the thing we want to do, we want to hit play on Ableton and we want that to start our whole sequence and everything to be in time. And the way that we do that is through Ableton Link. So the way we make sure Ableton Link is on is we hit menu, we go over here to Ableton Link, and we make sure that we're syncing with Ableton Link. Then I'm coming over here to my Mac and session window, there's this little button top left hand corner which says link. So we need to click link there. I'm going to go to the session view now and I'm quickly going to group these tracks together. Command G groups them together. So that's so I can start and stop different sections. So yeah, let's record some stuff in. So you can see this yellow bar moving along. And that yellow bar should correspond to the Ableton link bar up ahead. So whenever I hit play, it will just automatically start and stop on that. And everything should be in time. So let's mute a few things. and let's hit record. I'll just record eight bars. So now we can record the drum beat with all of the stuff in it. Let's hear the diggy tone and record that. So I'll hit play. I'll try a different pattern. So we see it recording in, let's record the bass in. Cool. Pretty simple. Just recording a few patterns in and messing around in the session view. That's if we want to record our patterns. What happens if we just want to play our instruments together organically? So now I'm going to go into the arrangement view and record in that way. I can just make an 8 bar loop. I'll record enable everything. We can have a bit of a jam that way.
getting the MPC on Ableton Link, linking all that up, and Bob's your uncle. If that was helpful to you, click the like button, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this, and leave a comment if you want me to check something out. Thanks a lot for watching.